Welcome to this video from the River Meadow technical team. In this video we'll be looking at how we can migrate IIS servers and upgrade the underlying OS at the same time. We'll be looking at how easy it is to take a Windows 2003 machine on premise and upgrade it to Windows 2008 in AWS. And also how we test that. Then we'll be looking at how we migrate Windows 2008 to Windows 2016 in a multi-stop process and then how we test that that has worked. So I wanted to start by taking a look at the source machine. This source machine is running in a virtualized environment on premise. I'm using the RDB client for Mac and I've already set up a link to connect to the machine on premise. So I'm going to use administrator and type in a password. That'll get us access to the machine with RDP and then we can open up that connection. It's probably worth mentioning at this point that this is a Windows 2003 R2 64-bit machine and that's the machines that we support. Just a quick look at my computer reveals a C drive and a CD in the CD drive. So we can skip past that and we can open up Internet Explorer. And there's our default page for IIS. So it's very simple. It's a very simple website, this one. Um, but you can see it's running and we have IIS configured to run. So the next thing is to jump across to the River Meadow SaaS platform. And what we're going to do here is we're going to do the pre-flight checks first. So we're going to do them for AWS. It's also worth noting here that we can't do them to Azure because Azure doesn't support Windows 2003. We're going to accept the defaults for everything else and get on with those pre-flight checks or migration readiness checks as we call them here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to connect to the box and check that there's nothing on that Windows 2003 server that's going to cause us any problems and nothing in there that will actually stop the migration working as we would want it to work first time. So this will take a little while, so I'm going to speed it up a little. And what we'll do is we'll open things up so we can see what checks are being done. And we can see at the moment it's trying to connect. Once it connects, it'll run those checks. We'll get green ticks for every check that has passed. And we can see here that all of the checks have green ticks. And we can indeed proceed. But what we're going to do here is to mimic what we do in production, we're just going to close this down. We can do the pre-flight checks way ahead of time to make sure any problems we do find we can fix in plenty of time so it doesn't affect the project. Let's carry on with mimicking a real project. What we're going to do is we're going to click on Migrate. We're still going to AWS, so we're going to select the AWS CA, but now we're going to click the Use Stored Information box. That means that it won't do the pre-flight checks again. It'll just use the ones that we did previously that were successful. So now what it's doing is it's actually just checking that the CA is compatible, and that it's up and running and that we still have a source that we can communicate with. Once it's done those it'll finish off and we can get going with doing the migration profile. It's probably worth mentioning if you check that use stored information box that nothing has changed on the source because that can cause us a problem. Now while I was talking we went into the migration profile and we're going to configure this so that it mirrors the landing zone that we've got all the information we need. So the first thing we'll do is we'll change the name because that needs to be information for us to use later. So we're going to put in Windows 2008 on the end here so that we know it's a 2008 machine. Then we need to check that we've got all the volumes that we need connected and that we're using block based. Then we're going to check that we've got a network connected and it's configured as we want it to be. Then we'll scroll down a little and we're going to check the instance type is correct and we're going to put it onto our default security group. Now we're going to select default because that's the one that gives us an isolated environment for testing later. Now we're going to stick set the defaults for the rest of these. We could add some tags in if we wanted to. Uh, in this occasion we're not going to, this is just for demo purposes. In reality you might want to. And then we're going to select that we're going to do an upgrade to Windows 2008 R2 Data Center Edition. Now we're going to accept the defaults again from here on in, so we're going to click on then continue. We're not going to add any migration extensions. So we can just do that and click continue. Now we will go away and run another set of pre-flight checks just to make sure that nothing we've done in this configuration is going to affect anything to do with the migration. We don't want anything stopping us having a successful outcome. So this will take just a few seconds and you can see that the first thing it does is checks the migration profile and then checks the config of the target instance. And there's our migration at the top of the list. So it started, it's doing the first step, which is instantiate target. Let's go and look at the details. So what you'll see is there's four steps here. Uh, we're on step one, and we have a step four, which is the in-place OS upgrade, which will take a little while. So what we're going to do is fast forward to the success, as we've just done. 
and you can see that it's worked and we have everything in place. The in place OS upgrade was successful. So what remains to do is to go and prove that that actually was successful and log into the new box. So what we'll do is we'll use the RDP client to log into that machine. When we get to the desktop, what we're going to do is we're going to see that it's a Windows 2008 machine on AWS. Now we're going to log into Internet Explorer and browse to the local host URL. That's the default page for the Internet Information Service or IIS and you can see that it is actually running so it's been migrated to successfully. What's really interesting is that because we've used the Microsoft upgrade path, we can take a look at the IIS management page. So if we start an IIS services, we'll see that it's been upgraded automatically to Internet Information Services version 7, which means not only have we upgraded the OS, but the application as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to continue the process and take the machine all the way to Windows 2016. Now you can do this process as a multi-stage process or as a single stage process. Now in this case I've done it as a multi-stage process. I took our 2008 box that we upgraded originally and I've migrated it and upgraded it to Windows 2012. I then tested that the IIS server was still working and indeed it was and it was indeed upgraded to the latest version. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add that 2012 box back as a source and migrate that to 2016. We're also going to add a couple of tags to make sure that we can see where we are in this process. So I'm adding here that it's an IIS server and it's on Windows 2012. We're also going to add it in to a migration group, which we set up earlier, which is our web internet services. We can migrate this machine now to Azure if we wish. The reason I'm doing this really is to show you that it is in truly cloud agnostic. And we're just going to make this a B2MS. No, no, B, no, Paul, B2MS. Thank you. There we go. Uh, and we'll add the source. Now, the next step we'll do is one stage. We aren't going to do the interim stage. We're just going to migrate the machine straight away. So we can now click on our machine and start that migration process. So clicking on the cloud icon, we'll start the migration readiness check wizard. So we're going to put this into Azure. So we'll select the Azure CA that we've already deployed. Uh, we're doing a full migration and we can check the migration readiness now. So what will happen is this will go off and check the machine that it is OK to be migrated. And as we've migrated it in, there shouldn't be any major problems here. This will take a little while. So what we'll do is we'll just fast forward to the point at which those are complete. Now you see we get a couple of warnings. Now one of those is about the operating system. Uh, so we can safely ignore that in this case. The other one tells us that we have message queuing running and that we need to be careful about how we migrate this machine. Again, we can safely ignore that. Now we can go ahead and create the migration profile. You've seen this before in previously in the video, so we're not going to dwell on this for too much longer. But uh, we're going to change the name. We're going to put 2016 on the end so we know what this machine is. Now this is going into Azure, so things are slightly different here. So we need to put it onto a resource group. We'll need to check that we've got the disks on the right places, that we've got the right volume selected, that we're doing block-based. We'll check that it's on the right network, which it is. We are going to put it onto a security group of our own choosing, so we're going to just choose one of those. I'm going to put it onto the DB one that I created for another DB migration. We can leave the rest and we just select that upgrade to 2016 data center. We don't need any migration extensions. We don't need any advanced settings. We can continue. We had warnings, so we've got this pop-up box. We can continue anyway because we checked those and we're okay with that. So now, as usual, it'll go away and check that nothing we've done will introduce any additional problems. This is particularly pertinent where we're running upgrades because we have additional requirements around things like the amount of disk space we have and the supported upgrade path. But in this case, no surprises really that that's successful. Uh, and now at the top of our list, we have a new migration that is ready to go. We can have a look at this. We can see that uh, it's going from 2012 to 2016. And if we scroll down a little bit, we'll be able to see the steps that are involved. And as you've seen before, there are four steps, the final step being the actual in-place upgrade. As usual with these things, I've skipped forward to where everything is finished. And we have four steps, all successful, and everything completed successfully. So what remains for us to do, really, is to go and check that the upgrade was successful and see if the application is still working. So as before, we're going to use our trusty RDP client. I've already set up a link to that new machine. The username is administrator. 
and we're going to put in the password. Now as these machines are actually clones of each other, the passwords are always going to be the same. So we can just put in the same password and then we can click on continue. That'll take us over to the machine and start the login process, minus a quick warning window. And there we are. What you'll notice here is that it's saying it's Windows 2012, but actually it's 2016. You can see that from the interface. Let's quickly go and have a look at the Internet, Internet Services Management page. And you can see it's on version 10. So it has successfully upgraded the version of IIS. Uh, let's just make sure that we are actually happy that it's working by opening a browser. So in this case, our browser is Internet Explorer. So let's uh, browse to the local host page. That'll be the default page for IIS. And when we hit return, we'll see that the page is in fact that page that we saw right back at the beginning of this video. So everything was upgraded correctly. Everything's working nicely. We even upgraded the application because it was a Windows application. So what we've shown you in this video is how we upgrade Windows 2003 to Windows 2008. How we can test that that's worked by logging into the machine without impacting production. How we can then migrate that machine from 2008 to Windows 2016 without impacting production again and how we can test it without impacting production. We also got the added benefit in this case of the fact that we upgraded the underlying application because it was IIS to the latest release and everything still worked. So thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you need to contact us, please feel free to reach out to us at sales at rivermeadow.com. And please do come back again. Keep a lookout for new videos. There's lots of great stuff, lots of exciting stuff happening here at River Meadow.